And we're going to put a Redfield 4-12 on this scope today, on this rifle today. I have a, a little Redfield 2-7 power on my Ruger Scout rifle that I really like. Uh, so I'm having, I'm hopeful about the Redfield here doing well. So what I'm going to do is just walk through how I put these, how I mount a scope and then kind of show you what I do from there. So gently tighten down these these are uh, Torx head screws. The old the old mounts had flat head screws. That's fine too. Uh, the trick with a flat head is you get yourself a hollow ground screwdriver. Um, the carpenter screwdrivers uh, with a profile like that, those don't really work all that great. But if you get yourself a, a hollow ground screwdriver, those work great on flathead screws. So you see the difference in the profiles. profiles. This is a chisel and this is ground, so it's basically these two surfaces are parallel when they when they get in the screw. But like I said, these are Torx heads, so we don't have to worry about that here. So what I'm going to do is just get the rings on more or less so they're the gap on this side is about equal to the gap on the far side. So nice and centered up. But I, I, want, I want the scope to be able to... Uh, see, I've already tightened it down too much. Um, the scope needs to be able to, to rotate a little bit. You want, you want some... Boy, that sounds awful. You want it to rotate some, but not a lot. And then what I do is I take the rifle up and I set it to the minimum and then the maximum magnification. And I, I work out the eye relief front to back. And I just take the rifle up, pick it up, and I put it on my shoulder. I like my head really far forward, so um, it's emulating what it'd be like if I was shooting prone. So I want if you get the rifle scope way back, that's fine if you're sitting upright at a bench, but when you get on the ground and you're shooting prone, then that doesn't work so good. So I usually mount my scopes pretty far forward. We'll see what it looks like. Test that at the minimum and then the maximum. And then at that point, you have left to right or, or front to back fine. Then you go in and I just eyeball it. Um, trying to get the, the crosshairs level. Uh, I find that that works real well. You know, if you take five or ten minutes doing that, you can uh, you can do real well. The, the levels that you can put on things, I've never gotten those to work because it's hard to find a level surface on a gun and on a rifle and on a scope. So. There's a couple ways you could try and line up a scope without some sort of instrument. One is you can look through the back of the scope and you can see the reticle there. And you can look down and see the, the axis of the bore and hopefully get that that reticle, that vertical crosshair, lined up with the bore. That's all you really need is, is you want that vertical crosshair to be passing straight down through the middle of the bore, uh, through the middle of the barrel. So you can, you can kind of do this by looking through the back of the gun and see if you can make that happen. Another way that I usually do is I just throw the gun up on my shoulder and I and I turn the scope left and right until I get it so it feels good. Um, the, the human eyeball is a pretty precision instrument and with a little practice you can you can get that lined up pretty good so it works most of the time. And if you decide it's off, you just go in and adjust it and do it again. Uh, there's gizmos out there that you put a, a level, you know, put a level on the scope and you put a level on the on the action. And it's like, well, uh, I don't see a part of my scope that's level. Maybe if I took the, the cap off there, but um, just eyeballing it seems to work real well. I mean... We're shooting, we're shooting a bullet at 300 yards. We're not trying to launch a rocket and hit the moon. Okay. So I picked the rifle up, put it on my shoulder. I moved the, the zoom in and out. Um, and I moved the scope up and back until I found a spot where I liked it. 
uh, where I and what I'm doing I'm looking through the the lens here and I'm looking at to see I want to the, the circle of light that's coming out of the back of that lens you want that to be optimized for your eye um, moving this back and forth probably at the maximum the maximum uh, magnification is the one that's the most delicate so I got that thing lined up now what I'm going to do is go side to side and then we'll tighten down these rings okay so the next step is we're going to snug down all these screws so between the bottom and the top scope ring there's a gap and what you want when you tighten these scope rings down is you want the gap to be equal size on both sides of these rings so what you do when you want when you do when you tighten these rings down is you you just tighten them down and you go diagonally across so one two three four and you just do that pattern and you do that on the top and the bottom you do that on both sides and just check your work as you're going and make sure make sure things are are lined up and if something gets off go ahead and back it out and, and uh, if one rings tight you can work on the other and none of your adjustments will come loose So off camera I fiddled around to make sure that the gap between the bottom and the top rings on both sides was e even. You know, back out a little bit on one side and tighten down on the other to get it just right. And now uh, you can use these things if you want, but a while back I went and bought a torque wrench and I've never looked back. Uh, so Ruger says you want 20 inch pounds on these screws. So what I do is I start low. I start at about 10 and I'll go in a star pattern, one, two, three, four, tighten down each one of these and I'll try and heat each screw two or three times. And so I barely had them snug down to begin with. You can see there's a lot of movement here. With the little Allen wrench here, I didn't tighten them down much. So now, now that's at 10, and what I'll do is I'll turn it up to 15, and I'll turn up to 20, and I'll just repeat that um, front and back until everything's tightened down. Uh, it's also good to pick up the rifle, double check the, the eye relief, moving the scope forward and back, check the eye relief, and then check the, the cant for, um, to make sure that the, the scope is still level. And that's it. So take and make sure tighten these uh, bases down with care because you want because there's there's a little bit of wiggle uh, and you want to get them both lined up just right so when you lay your scope down uh, lays it lays on those rings evenly and then get your rings on just a little bit adjust the the scope relief the eye relief uh, and then the cant to get it level and then tighten things down um, use a torque wrench if you got it and make sure the gap is the same on either side. So, thanks for watching the video. I've got another video on my channel uh, that shows me mounting a lapping, lapping a set of Ruger rings on a, another gun. So, I'll put a link to that here, and if you want, you can check that out. It's a little older video.